other than myself, because I didn't read them, did the rest of you have a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Yes. Motion to accept. I'll second it. I'll make make motion made and then seconded to accept the minutes as read. I'll do a roll call vote. Betty? Yes. Susan? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, I'll abstain because I didn't read them. If that, otherwise, they passed. Um, next item on the agenda is to review and discuss changes to the job descriptions, work hours worked, and pay rates. And the first one is the town clerk in regards to requests for increased hours. So, Amy, have at it. Hi. <laughs> I think most of you know me. Um, so, and Sure, most of you know that Lynn Sibley resigned as the town clerk on July 1st of 2021. And I was appointed by the select board until the next annual town meeting, which is June 14th. Um, a couple of years ago, Lynn submitted a request to the personnel committee to increase the position's hours from 19 to 22, um, which was granted. Um, she also, in that memo that she wrote, um, said that you know the position could be potentially more than 22 hours a week. Um, so I've been in it for the last eight months. I'm also the assistant treasurer collector and I work 10 hours a week for that position. So I'm really here 32 hours a week. Um, so I'm here Monday through Thursday, eight to four. And I've noticed um, that people come in a lot for the town clerk um, responsibilities. Um, so I'm requesting that for an increase from 22 hours per, per week to 28 hours per week. Um, I have my list of responsibilities in my memo that I do on a daily basis. Um, I don't know if you want me to go over those at all. Yeah. Any questions? No, so um, on page two is kind of um, my biggest concern is updating and organizing my list here of um, basically records retention. Um, it's pretty time consuming. There's some catch up I need to do. Um, and it's a pretty important part of the job. Um, I work a lot with the historical commission um, when they either have a project going on and the planning board, zoning board, all of their files, um, I would like to keep up to date and um, annual town meeting minute books and all the boards and committee meetings um, minutes are my responsibility. So. I'm a, I would, in my opinion, I feel that this is, it's very time consuming. Um, also, there's gonna be a pretty big transition over the next year where Lynn plans on retiring in um, March of 2023. Um, so I also still wanna be able to provide the same level of customer service that she did um, when she was doing the dual positions as treasure collector and town clerk. She was here for about 43 hours a week. Um, so, so there was always coverage. Um, so this might just be me personally, but my main concern is um, the perception that I'm not here. With 22 hours a week, it's not even three full days. Um, so I, I still want, I mean, that could be just an adjustment for the townspeople, um, but I, I do feel that there's a need for more than just 22 hours per week. Um, I did provide a, um, a, a survey as to other surrounding towns that and the hours that they work per week. Um, it's pretty interesting, the town clerk position. Um, a lot of these, um, well, I just went to a town clerk's conference and a lot of the town clerks are, are older. Um, they, they live and die for their town. They, they work the hours that are needed to get the job done. And a lot of them work more than the hours they're paid for. Um, and I, I respect that. I, I, um, some of them are trying to work towards getting their hours increased or their pay increased. Um, I'm, I'm not one to be able to get paid for 20 and work for 30. Um, but I, I respect that, you know, they, they, some of them do it and they love it. And, um, but I, so there's, there's some towns that, you know, I didn't get too much information from Ashland or Buckland, but I, I can definitely do that if, if you guys request it. Um, Conway's up there at 25 hours a week. Hatfield, 
she wanted to have a conversation with me on the phone about it. She is going to go for a salary increase this year. Um, I wasn't able to get a hold of her. Um, so she is working towards job changes. However, she is one who has been there and will work as many hours it takes to get the job done. Um, so there's other towns. I don't know Leverett and West Hampton's office structure. I don't know if it's like a joint position and it's a town administrator and a town clerk um, to work such low hours. Um, Deerfield um, is in transition right now. Their town clerk just left. Um, so, and it was a town clerk treasurer collector position. So they're dividing the positions and no decisions have been made yet. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with, you know, I, I would fall on the higher side of hours, which I understand. Um, however, I do think that the work is, you know, relatively similar to Sunderland and Deerfield, our surrounding towns. Okay, um, I'll open the floor for discussion. If your hours were to increase, you're proposing four hours a week. Would that put you in the office on Fridays or how, when, how would that work? Well, so it would be an increase of six hours per week because I'd go from 22 to 28. Okay. Um, right now due to, I have my youngest son's daycare is closed on Fridays. So oh. I, I'm hoping to have him transition into preschool in either July or September which would give me the ability to have the, I could be in the office on Fridays. Now, dividing up, now the hard part is, is if I am granted the 28 hours per week, how the appropriate way to divide that up. Mm -hmm. um, so Mondays, there definitely seems to be a need for an eight hour shift on a Monday. I don't know if I can, I should spread it out the rest of the week or what, you know, so far we've been, doing pretty well with being closed Fridays. I, I don't think there's been as much of a demand, Brian, have you, with you being here, have you noticed a lot of foot traffic walking away or? No. Uh, very, very, very yeah. few, if that, yeah, and I, if anybody. I do get to the occasional um, agenda on a Friday for a Tuesday yeah. meeting. Um, so I'm, I've been kind of tossing the idea back and forth of, either giving out my cell phone number. So if there was a need that you needed to send an agenda in on a Friday for a Tuesday, you know, shoot me a text and I can easily put that up. Or um, I also considered um, having notifications come up on my phone for when someone sends an email to agenda at Waitley.org, I can uh -huh. at least know it's there and get, you know, get to it as soon as I can. Um, so, you know, that's, those aren't the end of the world. I'm, I'm more than willing to do that it doesn't happen often but you know i'm i'm fine with being available in that way yeah. so anybody else have any com comments and questions yeah. i'm just looking at your budget amy and uh yeah. your sal you know it doesn't give me what you get paid by the hour but your salary is thirty one thousand. how much is it going to add to your to the salary budget, can you tell me? Or do so I have to figure it out? <laughs> no, it's a, so it's one hundred and fifty dollars per week. So it's a, around eight thousand dollars a year. It would increase. So we're yeah, I, I'd be a little shy of forty thousand. Okay. I just did the math, and it's eighty four thirty nine. Tom. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Is that six hours enough for you, Amy? Though to get everything done. Um, I feel, so I can answer that for what I've experienced the last eight months, yes. I don't, I haven't been through an election yet. I haven't been through an annual town meeting yet. Uh -huh. I, so I know in 2024, I'm going to have five elections. And, and, I, and I understand that those weeks, I probably will do 40, maybe 50 hours a week. But I, so I don't know, I, there's going to be obviously a balancing act in the position too. Um, so, you know, this I would say for right now, yes, the 28 hours would be sufficient. Um, and I, election years might be, you know, the heavier election years might be a little crazy, but I'll, we'll have to figure that out when they come. If she can justify it, I make a motion that we uh, approve it, her salary. I second that. And I second that motion. Yeah. 
Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll put it to a roll call vote. Betty? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Tom? Yes. Susan? Yes. And myself, yes. So that is unanimous. And thank you, Amy, for your input. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, now we're on to the rec department. Chris. Hey, guys. Yeah, so um, I am currently the chairman of the Recreation Commission. I uh, took that over over the summertime um, in 2021, last year. Um, things have been going great, really enjoying it. Uh, this was, you know, this was something that right when I moved to Whaley, I, <laughs> I immediately reached out to John Edwards, to Tom Sadowski, um, was trying to get on this so I could get into it right away. Um, I teach elementary school PE. I coach the varsity baseball team um, at Frontier. And uh, I just recently completed uh, my second grad degree in athletic admin. So this is something I'm really, really trying to get into, something I'm passionate about. Um, but yeah, so, so doing this job this year, I'm just you know, recognizing that to do this job the right way, um, you know, it, it takes a legitimate commitment. Somebody who's willing to be available. I mean, constantly, I am always checking my email, reaching out to coaches, you know, making, reaching out to people and making orders with, reaching out to other rec directors, you know, taking phone calls, um, looking for sponsors. Just started doing that yesterday with baseball. Um, so just kind of constantly going. And I do, I, I love it. I think it's a, it's a great thing for our community. It's something we need if we're trying to, you know, establish how important healthy lifestyles are. Um, like I mentioned when I, you know, I wrote my letter to you guys, um, you know, in today's world, that's kind of something that's sort of fading. So I think it's, you know, having somebody who's, who's committed to that, um, you know, I, I think that, I think that goes a long way. Um, so what I'm what I'm requesting or what I'm suggesting is that we consider uh, making the or creating a new position as the um, as the recreation director here in Waitley and uh, have a paid a paid position leading that you know the the rec department in Waitley. Well, um, yeah, that, that's what I have. Mean. I guess I'd like to hear um, some questions from you guys, um, some things that I could be more clear about. Okay, does anybody have any questions for him? Joyce. I'll start. Um, uh, how would, um, the, what would the oversight and the hiring responsibilities be? There's different, for most positions, it's a, uh, the, the department does interviews and they you know, suggest uh, uh, or make a recommendation and maybe the select board approves it or maybe it's a, a contract, like the police chief is a contract that's negotiated with the select board. Do you, um, have you gotten to the point of having those kind of details kind of fleshed out as to what the, what the process would be like for uh, hiring and then for oversight? Is this someone who would report to the town administrator or would they report directly to uh, the rec department or, or the, like the rec committee is all volunteers. So that's a little, um, a little iffy. Um, you did, is any of that um, something that you've been put some thought into already? Yeah, so I mean, when it comes to something like that, you know, I'm totally, uh, you know, I'd support whatever the towns, you know, however you guys go about that type of thing. I'm certainly, you know, in favor of cooperating with that. I think that, you know, I guess my under what I would suggest is creating this position and then the town go forth with the pro with the hiring process, interviews, um, you know, et cetera, what, what the town does in order to, to uh, select professionals for a hired position. And I would um, be in favor of that. And I also 
I feel like the Recreation Commission would be in favor of that. So by no means am I, um, you know, placing myself in a position before it's even created. However, I am sharing my experience to, um, you know, share with people how much how much effort does does go into this position, and how if someone is in that paid role, um, it's it's sustainability. It's somebody who's going to be there for, uh, you know, a number of years longer than just like okay, my son's in kindergarten, I'm going to do this for you know him and his sister for four or five years and then okay start over right. you know um yeah, yeah. So, yep do you have a um uh a list of like responsibilities for the person who would be in this job yeah certainly so currently i would want to keep things you know we we would recommend that things stay how they are but i don't have a description of that job i mean I'm, wait unless it's in an email that i didn't see is there a job description in one of the emails, Brian, because I, I don't think it's going to go anywhere without a job description. Right. Like, what are the responsibilities of the person in that position? And uh, kind of like, and I, I think we need a lot more deep. I, I would certainly need a lot more detail before I would be willing to recommend it. I completely agree with you that yep. having a paid person running, uh, overseeing the rec department would be great because. Yep. I the same thing when when I was a, when I was a mother of small children, absolutely there were some great people volunteering. But as soon as their kids got into the next like middle school or high school, um, things kind of fell apart, and it depended a lot on who happened to be available to volunteer. So I think continuity, and I, I think all the things you're saying are really great. But I think the kind of things we might need to hear are things like what are the duties and responsibilities. How many hours a week is this going to be, or is this going to be something that's more seasonal? Um, yep. Is it, um, and and are they willing to like take on things like, um, uh, you know, like basically doing some of the legwork for the rec committee on like improvements at Hurley He, that sort of thing. Like I, that's what I'd be looking for in, in detail in a sure. job description. Yeah. Um, so I that was I included. Um, so I logged my hours um, during. Since the start of 2022, just kind of figured, um, you know, we've gotten through basketball registration and we're, we're moving on as responsibilities were still going. So I didn't make a job description, just kind of wasn't exactly, that was why I sent you guys the letter in my hours. That was kind of my way of introducing this. Um, but I'm certainly happy to, to share with you what I'm currently doing and what the duties and responsibilities of that position would be. You know, currently we're we're doing soccer, we're doing basketball, and we're doing baseball. Those are like the three main sports that we're you know that we're putting out for the town. Um, yeah. We're doing that pre-K through sixth grade. We're generally having four different levels: so pre-K and kindergarten, grades one and two, grades three and four, grades five and six. So you have four different age groups. Right. Um, right. But right now. I don't think I want you to just recite what the duties are here. I think we need some something written okay. about what are, what would be the the duties of this person. So because I I, I think that would be really important. Um, okay. To be able, I, I mean, to be I, able to go with and give a strong recommendation. I think that's one at least one thing that we would need. Now, and I'll shut up because I know other people have have uh, other things to ask. I, I mean, I totally agree. We need a job description, and I think it starts by us through our, you know, through Brian to to pull from some of the other towns locally around what they have for job descriptions, and have you review them. You know, work together to customize one for us that then we can then bring back to to us at our next meeting and say, here's what we're. Um, actually looking at and we'll have all that information in front of us instead of I, does anybody else have any other comments about that i i agree i agree with everything you're saying i agree uh i this is a question for joyce i guess uh mm. this is something that would have to be voted on by the selectmen to uh a prove this position or create this position, I guess, or 
How do we go about that? Mm, um, to create a position, I know many times the select board has approved creating a position. Um, if, but it's often, well, like for example, the most recent one, Hannah, we had a town meeting vote to, to get the money to be right. able to do that. So I, I think it's not just the select board decides. I think it's um, it's a uh, it's a bigger picture because it's, there's going to be some funding attached to it, right? They may have to go to town meeting. Yeah, but it, it starts it starts here with us. Right. We review it and then we make the recommendation to the select board, yeah. and then it's in their court. Okay. I just I had one question, which is in the last paragraph of the letter that you shared. You're saying that the rec commission intends to vote, so they have not yet voted on this. Uh, no, that was going to be, you know, mm -hmm. that was something that I was going to officially speak uh, with the people of the rec uh, recreation commission on that issue. Yeah. Okay. On so that topic, would, excuse me. So we wouldn't be able to. Can't do anything now. Vote on hmm. it, I assume, until that's happened anyway. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Yeah, so I guess moving forward, I mean, I'm certainly, you know, ready to do whatever I need to do in order to help create that job description. Um, you know, we'll have our review of the topic um, in our, you know, in our minutes from from our uh, meeting in February, so I'll be able to hear that. Um, as far as getting in touch with with other like local town rec directors, is that something that like I should be doing or is that something that I'm like, collaborating with one of you to do that? Uh, I, I think, you know, you should check into like, I don't, let's, we'll take Deerfield or Sunderland. If they have a rec director, you know, what's their duties? What is their job description? Okay. Yeah, it sounds like it would probably be a collaboration of some sort. I'm sure the rec commission has some idea of what they would want the responsibilities of that and what's their relationship going to be to the rec commissions, the rec commission, the person that you report to, or do you really report to the town administrator um, and the, you're there to facilitate what the, the goals of the rec commission um, uh, you know, within the law, right? <laughs> so I, I think it's gotta, it's gonna have to be a collaboration to come up with that job description. But I, I like how Keith is thinking about find who's already solved the problem um, and amend their solution to make it fit with our town, right? Is the is the rec commission appointed by the select board or the moderator? Select board. Okay, so then it makes sense, you know that. The select board has control over it and reports to Brian, I would think, but okay. Well, then I think, Chris, we're at the point where um, we work on getting a, a job description a little bit more refined as to, you know, the particulars that Waitley needs to meet our, our specific needs with it and come back to us and we'll take it again. I also think we need the recommendation from the rec commission, like Susan was talking yeah. about. Yeah, I agree. Yep. But it, I, I mean, I've been through it just like the rest of many of us with having children and totally agree that there's a ton of turnover and change. And just when things seem to be rolling along pretty good, all of a sudden the key person leaves and then you're back to square one, struggling to, to get back in motion again. And it's, it's a never ending process where yeah. this, this paid position would help bridge that gap all the time. It's not gonna eliminate needing some key parents and people to help out in many aspects, but to just keep things rolling smooth would be beneficial. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Moving on, the next item is Chief Sabine with the traffic control officer. And we this was brought to us previously, but Jim wasn't able to make it. So Jim, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. 
So I'm not sure what was submitted to you. I know I submitted a um, a policy that was written to Brian that kind of outlines the the position. But yeah, so basically, in a nutshell, the the position <clears throat> that I'm looking to create is for strictly for police details. Um, we have limited staff as it is on the police department, and increasingly over the years, we've had more and more difficult time trying to get officers to, you know, hire them for a police detail for whatever, whatever reasons there, there may be family issues. They don't want them. They're busy doing other stuff. So <clears throat> creating a traffic control unit, so to speak, it would be a civilian position. So it, it wouldn't require a sworn police officer um, with the change in police reform and the new post commission uh, all officers in Massachusetts have to be certified as police officers. Um, I think we've discussed this over the last couple of years. Part of that certification for our, our officers, they would have to attend an additional 200 hours of training right now in order to maintain <clears throat> or get their certification. If they don't do that, they would have to go to the full-time academy. So what we end up with is a lot of part-time officers that are looking to work, work details. So having a traffic control unit a civilian position i wouldn't necessarily need to have a police officer and it would it might be easier for us to find retired police officers that want to continue to work details but that don't want to attend the additional hundreds of hours of training that they would have to complete in order to just work a detail because they wouldn't be working any shifts or anything they wouldn't be working patrol they would only be directing traffic so that's kind of why I'm looking at, um, I'm not taking the position away from police officers, it'd be officer, offered to police officers first, but kind of as a, as a backup plan, I could have a pool of, of uh, non-certified police officers that I could draw from to work details. Because right now we have to go to other towns um, to, to, to try to find people to work the details. Sometimes we have sheriff's department working, sometimes we, we call in the state police. So that's essentially what I'm looking for as far as a, the traffic control officer goes. We would look at uh, retired police officers. We're in a situation where we, we would potentially over the next year, we would be losing um, three police officers that would have the ability to work details, but without completing this additional training, they would lose that ability to do details. So. That's essentially what it is. It's not a very long policy. I'm, I'm sure you've all had an opportunity to take a look at it. If you have any any questions or if you'd like me to explain anything further, I'd be happy to do that. I mean, one thing, I go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. From what I read, Jim, the it's not, we. It, there's no additional expense to the town, uh, mm -hmm. insurance, uh, county retirement comes to my mind. Uh, they're not gonna, be, try to get on our health insurance or it, this is uh, and all the town is doing is the town gets paid by the contractor and turns around and pays the traffic control officer. Is that the right, right. idea? Correct. It, 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 uh, financially or administratively, it doesn't necessarily change how we do anything right now. Um, the only thing that would change is by these officers becoming non-certified officers, it creates a civilian position, which takes away the 111F for injured on duty. It takes away um, the insurance or the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the retirement aspect of it from a county retirement for police officers. So it puts them in more of a, a civilian position. The rate of pay is the same as what we get for detail. So there is no cost to the town. We, we would still charge a 10% administrative fee for the details so the town would still be um, collecting that administrative fee as well for the details so nothing really changes except for how that position looks uh, on paper okay they would if they got injured on duty then it would be through workers comp instead of the separate policy that we have for for police and fire correct and as far as in um, retirement that would go through obra i believe i'm correct in saying that as far as I know, yes. And and you're asking us to create a position, but it doesn't really um, obligate us 
to any additional funding. And it's just like the, you know, so like hours per week are going to be just whatever you happen to need for details. Right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's a per diem type of thing. So, you know, an officer may get one detail yeah. a year, they may get one detail a yeah. week. And what's preventing that from happening right now uh, under the current rules? So there's there's nothing preventing it. It's just the the pool of people that we currently have. Um, it's gonna it's getting harder and harder to find people to work details um, from a law enforcement perspective. And with the new police reform, we're gonna be right. potentially losing right. some of our officers going to other departments. No, I, I no, I understand that. But what, why couldn't you hire someone who's qualified but not certified as a police officer with the new training right now to do a detail? What is preventing that right now? Would not, nothing would be preventing it. The, oh, in order okay. to hire somebody right now to do a police detail, there'd have to be a certified police officer. Oh, so that's what's preventing you from that's doing it right now. This. You're yeah. saying you're saying that right now you can't do that because right now they have to be certified police officers. Correct. Okay. So when you said nothing is stopping you, that's why I was confused. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm just wondering not, why we have to do this. It's not necessarily stopping. But to, to, to hire somebody, to hire a police officer for the town of Waitley as a Waitley police no, officer yeah. just to do details, yeah. that's okay. It's going to be difficult to, to find people to do that. Right. No, I, I'm not. I, so I, I feel like I keep asking the same question and then I keep getting a different, uh, an answer to a different question. So right now, if you had someone who was not a certified police officer, but qualified for this job, you could not hire them because they're not a police officer. You have to hire a police officer now. Correct, they have to hire a certified police officer. Okay, yeah. so that's the thing that's preventing you from doing this right now. And that's the reason why we have to say, hey, we recommend we have this position that would allow you to hire someone who is no longer certified as a police officer, yet qualified to direct traffic. Correct, yes. And okay. That's, that's just an internal policy? Or is there a state law that creates state that? Law for... like, is there a state law that says who's allowed to direct traffic at a... To, to Joyce's question, yeah. does the adoption of the policy remedy that barrier? Does that remove that barrier? Yes. Yeah. Of, of just an internal policy. Correct. It, it can just be an internal policy. Yeah. There's no, okay. no other requirement that right. needs to be met for that. Yeah. Some, some towns are doing this, some towns have been doing this. Um, out east, you see it a lot a lot more with larger departments where they actually use firefighters as well. We don't, we don't have full-time firefighters, so this wouldn't, this wouldn't extend to them uh, at this point. I mean, it's something we could explore moving down the road, um, but there's, there's departments that use, you know, their highway department guys or their fire department guys, or you know, it's not necessarily police officers just because the, the difficulties in finding people to, to do the details now. Susan, do you have a question for? Yeah, so would the pay for the hourly pay be the same as what we're paying the certified police officer now or would it be different? Nope, the, the pay would be the same. The pay is it's paid by the vendor, whoever it is, Verizon, Eversource, whoever it might be. So the detail rate is set. It's currently at $50 an hour. Um, that's that's currently set, so it would be the same for uh, this position and the same as for a police officer to, to do the same position. So there's, there's no difference to us in terms of what we're paying, but it broadens the hiring pool, makes more people available? Yep. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So uh, it sounds like what we need to do, we'll, we can again make a recommendation to the select board and let sure. them make the decision but am i correct in that brian um yeah we uh we would make a recommendation i i have a question for 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 jim if i if i may um it i mean the title's traffic control officer but let's assume we have a crystal ball and in a couple months there's details at let's say some establishments in town um, what do you, how do you feel about, you know, this position? Uh, is it going to be like, it, it says traffic, but are you thinking broader in terms of 
Other no, details? so it's so it's it's kind of it's outlined in the the policy, but it's more of a discretionary thing as well. So if we're say we had a, a detail at Castaways, that okay. kind of requires a police officer because okay. there, there may be a fight, somebody needs to get arrested, something like that. It's a uniformed position. Okay. So this would be more for traffic control, you know, working a parade, working a you know special event, to, like with the the two fiftieth coming up. You know, we could we could have people helping with parking and directing traffic in and out of areas and helping pedestrians across the road, that kind of thing. So it would follow the same policy. I mean, if they did a detail for the town, it would be a different rate. It'd be a lower rate because we have a different rate for town detail um, as opposed to a private detail. Right. And then what if I'll use any, oh, I don't know who to use. Oh, he's broken. <laughs> broke. no, his neck is broken. <laughs> we need a screenshot to show him. That make a good picture. <laughs> he was saying he was he was messaging earlier. Hey, are you getting bad sound? And we were getting bad sound. I hope someone else is co-host. So when he gets kicked off and comes back, we'll still Use be okay. Um, here he is. How's your neck? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, it says it's still recording. So good. Somebody else is co-host. Oh, there we go. There's, There's Brian co-host. again. There's a co-host. So Jim, what's my answer? Just kidding. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at the ceiling for a while. <laughs> So if an employee wanted to apply to, can they hold those dual positions? Hold dual positions like a civilian traffic control and a police officer? Uh, what's, yeah, and an administrative assistant for the town of Whateley and a traffic control officer. Oh, so a separate position for the town. Yeah. I mean, not in the police department. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's open enough where... Further down the road, we could we could look at that option. Right now, we would be looking at um, you know former police officers that were at one point certified, have the training. But like I said, some departments some departments across the state use firefighters and you know mm-hmm. other other town employees for, oh, for those yeah. those positions. Maybe down the road, Brian, but not right now. <laughs> yeah. There's no answer to your question. So what would the the qualifications, what's the training required? So I would think, I mean, if it's a job that the, if it's a position that the town has, then, you know, we, we just set the criteria, what do you need to train? And then we shouldn't be prejudiced against one person or another, right? It's up to Jim. Yeah, correct. I I totally agree. But, you know, it's, this is, this is the kind of a, a first step for us because the police officers have always been assigned details because um, things can happen. We've got CPR certification mm-hmm. because somebody yeah. could get injured, somebody could get hurt on the on the job there. Yeah. You know, vehicles go by, you may identify somebody that, that's got a warrant or some other crime that's being committed. So we've always kind of looked at it from that the, from that perspective. Um, so that's why I would look for people that have had that level of training or experience. Um, just just putting somebody out there to to wave their arms at traffic to me I mean I, I, at this point I think it it creates a more of a of a liability in a sense because I mean they would be under my direction but I'm not standing out there with them watching how they're doing their job so you know I trust the police officers that have been doing this for years that's why no, I would look at retired no I, I understand why a police officer would be would maybe yeah. be prioritized but um, I guess, what I'm trying to get at is, is there somewhere, I don't know, a job description right. where it says this is the minimum training that would be required. Maybe these other trainings would be good if they had them, but not required. Um, I mean, I guess that you, I, there's a letter somewhere that I read at the time and I haven't read in a while. So I'm having a little trouble locating it. Um, and maybe that information is in the letter. Yeah, the, the policy itself, I mean, it outlines the authority, it outlines the duties, um, the training itself. Yeah, that's what um, I'm it, trying to find now. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a section in there. I don't They've know. I've got the comfort there. dog policy that right. came right up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we definitely need to, you know, take your, 
your policy and sort of work on incorporating that into more of a job description that we can include with the rest of our town job descriptions. Jim, maybe you can reach out to some of the towns that you referred to that already have civilian and yeah. maybe get their job descriptions and we can come back with, just like we said to the rec department. Yeah, for, to, to my knowledge, there, there is no job description that was created for them. It's just the policy from the, okay. the police department. It's, it's a similar policy that we're using. We're all kind of use the same uh, generic policy and make a, some modifications to, to fit our, our individual towns. But um, yeah. as far as I know, there's no actual job descriptions created. It's just the, the duties and training and stuff outlined and within the policy. So I'm not sure if that's something that yeah. would need to be created, but. Well, for creating a position, it seems like a description of what's expected in that position is, is kind of something we do. So I'm still looking for your pop, the, that, <laughs> I, you know, that, that, that lovely, um, yeah. the dog policy keeps coming up. If you've got the material, oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, the materials packet. If you scroll down within the materials packet, that I, um, the mater that there's a materials packet. All right, now I'm now I'm in trouble because I I only have like a one pager. I've got something uh, like it looks like the uh, PDF of an Excel file. Yeah, Brian, you sent that today. No, uh, that was sent a while last. ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I I feel like I remember seeing this a while ago, but uh, um. Was this came for our for our prior meeting, but right, Jim yeah. wasn't able to make it. Right. So, and, and that was like a January 18th email that has like has so many replies to it that I can't find. So, personnel committee first meeting. <clears throat> um, this was a February 14th email, 2:39 from Brian. February 14th. Yeah. And what? Uh, and you said. February 14th at 2.39 from Brian. Mm. We I have the agenda, the agenda and materials. For this meeting? Yeah. yeah. It went to your waitly.org email. Yeah. Okay. No, I've got, I, that all goes to one place. Okay. Uh, there's a FERCOG municipal survey. I found it now. Thank you. <laughs> To Keith's point, I think if I'm thinking about the 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 file of job descriptions that I have on on my computer, I, I think we do have sort of the the town of Waitley formatted job descriptions. For I think we have it for police chief, police uh, police sergeant, and uh, part time part time officer. part time police officer. Yeah. Um. So I think it will probably make sense to create. One of those, and but I understand, Jim. You also have this, you know, this policy for your for your operations. Yeah, so that's that's what I was I was just wondering if creating a job description in in lieu of a policy or if the policy because like I don't we don't necessarily have a policy in place for the sergeant's position that goes by the job description. So right, that's that's why I submitted the policy because I was I thought it was you know absent. A policy, then you would need a job description, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah. But I don't think it would be difficult to to create with that format, anyways. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it would be that. I would. I don't think it would be that heavy of a lift. I mean, it'll probably follow a lot to do with the part time. It'll probably be very similar to the part-time officer <coughs> position, I would imagine, with some tweaks. But yeah, I mean, it, it, my opinion is I think it seems to make a lot of sense. If if, yeah. if we're going to be losing, uh, if we're going to be losing a lot of our part-time officers who do some of the details because of the um, the post certification or their movement to full-time, you know, full-time. 
employment somewhere else, it seems that it, it seems wise to have a, uh, yeah. a backup plan, so to speak, I guess. Right. Yeah. I guess to me, the, the problem is more procedural. Like, is it just like, is the town adopting this policy? Is the police department adopting the policy? Because um, it says it's a, a police and procedure, a policy and procedure number from the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Standards. I don't know that that's at the top of any of our policies for the town. Or, I mean, and normally personnel committee, we're looking at job description. So I don't know what's the right way to make this happen. Yeah. But we should probably figure out the right way to do it. Uh, I think we do need a job description. Jim, this would be part of your, right? I've seen a lot of you, get, you have a lot of policies in this format, right? Your operating yes. procedures yep. are in this format. Um, so I would imagine that that from the town standpoint, we would need we would need to put together that job description and then have the personnel committee, if they're so willing, recommend it to the recommend it to the select board for adoption. Okay. And this isn't, I mean, we want to do it soon, but it's not necessarily budget dependent. Yeah. FY23 budget dependent. So yeah. this doesn't affect his budget at all. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, I, I think I have I think I have the uh, part time officer job description. I think I have the job descriptions anyways in whatever word format. You can, uh, so you can, I can modify it in some way. Yeah, yeah, I, I could put something together, get it to Brian. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Brian, you and Jim will work on coming up with a policy that or just, I mean a description that you can come back to us with then. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that's okay. really doable. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. <clears throat> all right, you all set, Jim? Yep. All right. Thank you. Then, Thank, you. <clears throat> Thank you for that update. Um, the next item on the agenda is the operator labor, and it was I had submitted a request um, for a salary increase, and I had attached a, um, you know, a. a little bit of a write-up as to what I had and, and the reason I did it. And of course, when I started this, I didn't, we hadn't gotten in the um, salary um, survey from Amy or the fur cog at that time. But one of the things that, you know, I just want the personnel committee to understand and recognize is that there's been a lot of changes recently in our you know our pool of people to get from and that is that changes our cdl licenses for instance previously well i won't say it was easy to get a cdl license um i could for instance hire someone who didn't have a cdl license and the town could sponsor that applicant and they could get their permit and then the town could have them take the town truck and get a CDL license, just like any of the local contractors around here could do the same thing. Well, as of February 7th of this year, it's become a federal law that says that all new CDL applicants must obtain um, a training course that is approved by the federal government. And so consequently, in locations around here, that means to go to like Tri-State Tractor Trailer or some of these um, businesses that are in, in business to make money. And so it's become very expensive, somewhere in the vicinity of $10,000 for, for young people to spend out of their pocket to get their CDL licenses. And so um, another thing that I had done is just had thought about taking a look at the minimum wage and for that matter, it probably um, is interesting probably to look at some of our other town positions. But um, in my write-up that over that same period of time, the Massachusetts minimum wage had gone up 78%. And during that time, same time period, the operator labor had gone up 32%. So half of basically what minimum wage has gone up. And so, you know, 
the job doesn't require a college education, but at the same point in time, it's it's certainly a skilled position that requires a little bit more than just a high school diploma. Um, and that's why, um, you know, I had suggested, and maybe we can further look at it when we look at the um, the salary survey that we do now have, but um, I just know that it's my my lowest rate is at 2096 right now and when minimum wage is that going to be pushing $15 an hour there's not much difference and in between the two and you know I know Tom you work for contractors and to to get somebody to come to work for drive truck for $20 an hour is very difficult and that's why we've gone through numerous um people coming to work for us more recently this past year I had an employee work for four weeks before he ended up taking another job with more money so it's we seem to be going through a lot of employees coming and going to to make a lot more money so we spend a lot of money and time on training we spend a lot of money sending their these employees to physicals and the town's paying for all this stuff and then we turn around and lose them so that's really all I wanted to bring forth. And the other request that I wanted to also say is the part-time part -time operator, labor driver position, I'd like that to be increased to $22 an hour. Um, that right now um, was that, it's really low. I don't know what that is at the moment, but that's not even on our, on our, our sheet because it's not a, um, but again, to, for me to call um, somebody up in the middle of the night and say, "Hey, we need you to help us plow snow," I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get somebody that's gonna get out of bed for sixteen dollars an hour. Uh -huh. and, and so, I don't feel twenty-two dollars an hour is, you know, out of the question as far as being fair to offer somebody to come in and drive truck. You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, Tom, do you think that, you know, I, you've worked for like the contractor side of things at $22 an hour for a part-time guy to come in and plow that's, snow? That's, that's still pretty low, but it's, you know, if, if you can get somebody to do it, that's, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I understand that it's, it's lower than a lot of the private contractors pay but it's more than presently what we do so it's right. you're we're talking about pay, you know being contracted by the state versus working for the town so it's you know it's hard to compare but i I'd, I'd say you're you're fit you're fair enough there so and to raise the the full-time operator truck driver rate to you want to raise it to 23 something uh, you know uh, the the base position for a new employee to come in off the street, I wanted to raise to 2250. Yep. Um, and then we have the other position is the operator. After you've come to work for us and you've been here for three years, that would be a 2325, that position. But um, there again, I don't mind taking this and sort of tabling it until we get into the salary adjustment stuff. Well, that this is a salary adjustment. Well, I mean, we're not looking at our the the spreadsheet that we have that was prepared. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, if all right, that's Brian's yeah. putting it up now. If we want to, okay, this is the one that would have. Yeah. One sec. This is the this is actually our wage spreadsheet that that we use. So I just wanted to show the the current part time operator would have been on that one. Highway. Oh. Right, that's what you're talking about. Right yes, yeah. so I it's at, remember. it's at $16 and is that 18 cents? I can't read. Yeah, 13, uh, 13. 16, 13. And so I just feel, you know, with as we know, minimum wage is going to be hitting fifteen dollars pretty darn quick. Yeah. For me to ask somebody to come out 
for sixteen dollars an hour with a CDL license. I just feel that that's that's no. not right. Make it twenty two. And then that one, you know, if we could adjust that, I mean, that one's, and then again, that's only as I need it. It's not yeah. that many. You haven't needed not anybody that much. yet, have you? What's that? You didn't need anybody yet this year, did you? It's only occasion. Um, I actually had John Hannum for a couple hours one day, but, um, and again, he's been, you know, very, um, very helpful in the aspect that, you know, he's not necessarily doing it. Right. you know for the money but if if we get into a blizzard situation and we have to go a little deeper and try to find somebody um yeah 16 an hour is not going to work no agreed i make a motion we raise it to 22 dollars an hour second okay i have a motion made and seconded is there any other discussion can i just ask can i just ask you a question sure and i'm showing right now the if you have a guy that you hire and he's in his second year operator laborer plowing and you bring in somebody who makes more than them you think that's going to be a problem well that's i mean i understand what you're saying but and that's why i had um i had requested that the that where you're boxed in right now, that position go to twenty two fifty. That was my that's my request. And then what about uh, operator labor three plus years? They'd be making uh, operator that, labor too. plus three. I was requesting at twenty three twenty five. Okay. But yeah, I I guess if we get to the point where we do not. Um, decide to make those adjustments to the operator labor i understand what you're saying and maybe then we need to keep the part-time position underneath but again it's it, you know i just wanted to make i just wanted to bring that up yeah i get what you're saying the other way to look at it keith is that the, the full-time guys getting benefits uniforms yes. da, 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 the part-time guy he comes in when you call him and you pay him 22 bucks an hour okay. and, he goes, and then he goes home. Right. You can't collect yeah, unemployment, that's... nothing. True. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that is just remember that other... argument. <laughs> there... <laughs> any yeah. other discussion in regards to the, the motion on the floor? If not, I'll put it to a call. Betty? Yes, I agree. Susan? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, oh, Joyce, I'm sorry. Yes. And, my, and myself, I'll abstain because it's my department. Um, so that was one of the three requests it's one here, of three, right? right? Yes, if we, I, but I, you know, like I said, I don't know if we want to take up for that. Other, okay. Do we want to take up the other two requests when we do our, the big spreadsheet amongst all the other, or do you want to just take care of them now? Just take care of them now. We're looking yeah. at them. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So, okay. Operator labor one to three years is going to go from <coughs> 20, uh, 54 to 2250. That was, that's my request. Okay. I make a motion. We raise the one to three year operator labor to 2250 an hour. Second. Yeah. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll bring it to a vote. Betty? Yes. Susan? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Tom? Yes. And again, myself, I'll abstain since it's my department. 
Then next one is the operator labor plus three. Plus three is going to go from 20, 21, 22 to 23, 25. I make a motion. We raise it to 23, 25. That's Second. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Joyce. <laughs> That's Sorry. okay. You snooze, you lose around here. <laughs> okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll bring it to a vote. Betty. Yes. Susan. Yes. Choice. Yes. Tom. Yes. And again, myself, I'll abstain. Okay, that takes care of that. Now, um, the next thing on the agenda was to, you know, we can, the next thing on the agenda was to review the salary survey anyway. So, um, Brian, do you want to bring up the, share the screen on the current all this all the positions yeah can you can you see that yes okay that this isn't the one that amy prepared though let me reshare there we go that's the, that's the one Yep, so Amy reached out to all these towns and one well, of the towns that we compare ourselves with. Um, again, it was a, what we get back is sometimes inconsistent and we try to do the best we can with what we have. Um, so, I mean, everything was was pretty consistent. The, I'm gonna skip down. If anybody has any questions, we can address them. But I'm gonna skip down to, um, which one's up first here? It looks like it's the librarian um, is the one that seemed to be a little low. Uh, the first one that seemed to be a little low. Um, it's currently the wage is 22.93, median actual is 24.68, and the average is 24.83. Obviously there's variability and in, in, in differences in the, um, between the different library systems. Um, it's something that we struggle with every time we do this. Um, but overall, that's 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 where it came out this time. I, yeah, I guess I think she's probably definitely on the low end um, of these numbers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mid to low. I mean, yeah. The one thing that your screen is not sharing is the last column, which is yeah. the percent below, which in this case, she's 7.63% below out below the median. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, now you can't see the category. No, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> we, if we shrink it down anymore, we won't be able to read it. We won't be able to read it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Nope. One of the things that we do have in this case is we have a pretty good amount of, you know, like some of the positions when there's only one or two positions, it's tough to come up with a, yeah. but in this case, just about every town has a librarian. Oh. That's, so we've got many in numbers to work with. Yeah. Is it? Is it just me or, you know, part of me says <clears throat> if, if nobody from the library is advocating for a pay increase, should we be giving them a pay increase? Well, I think what we normally do is we don't actually control what the librarian makes. That's somebody else decides. Right. That that's so the library trustee. We just recommend. So yep. I think we just forward this information to them. Let them know this is what we got for salary surveys. It's okay. now in your hand. It looks to us like she's about seven and a half percent below other area towns. They may decide to go get more data, but I, I sort of feel like we we don't have to do anything on this other than forward the information in. 
No, I, I don't, I'm not sure that maybe we can make, make a recommendation, but at the, that's at the very most what we would do is recommend that they take a look at it, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. We just suggest that, you know, here's the information, do with it as you wish. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, especially since the library is governed by, you know, the trustees, which are elected, I guess, Joyce, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if we, if we need to even take a vote, if what we're really doing is just passing the information along. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay, moving down the list of the ones that are highlighted. Um, the next one highlighted is the police chief. Um, and That's about just under 4% below average or below the median. So that's, that, contract. that's governed by a contract. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I can, I can share the results of the survey with, with Jim and he can do, okay. I guess what, what he wishes with it. And I, I had mentioned in the email, uh, the, the fire chief. And, um, when I had originally done that, I, I, di I didn't notice that I, that I, I, so I took out Atfield and Shootsbury, which appear to me to be full-time, yes. uh, fire chiefs. So that obviously changed the, the numbers, whereas before it looked low, now it looks right on or, or a little bit high. Um, but, we, no. we do, I know I know we're just making you know passing the information along, but for the police chief, should we be taking out West Hampton because I, that looks so out of whack? I wonder if that's a part time position. Yeah, West uh, I, I did take out West Hampton there. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I believe it is a part time position. Yep. Okay. Well, again, then if we're we're dealing with contract in that aspect, um then we'll move on to the next. Keith, can I just bring up can I just bring up one thing related to the fire department? Yep. Um, sure. And I, I just want to make the committee aware of this that um, because of the mandatory retirement laws, the at some point next summer, I think the fire chief will face mandatory retirement, um, and the town will. It, uh, essentially be at a crossroads as to you know what happens with the fire department um and whether we continue in the um you know with the same sort of part-time chief i know i think his administrative duties and his inspection duties definitely increased with um all the marijuana establishments that are trying to come in um so i, I just wanted to make this committee aware that you know, there, there. I think there are increasing administrative duties. Um, you know, it, it's it's a fairly low stipend for what we're offering, um, and John's been willing to do it for I didn't I don't even know how long, but it's, I think it's been a while. Um, so I just I, I don't know what the what the prospects are for finding somebody to you know to fill that position, which I would imagine takes a lot of training. Um, for you know essentially 10 grand um it, it there's not any decision to be made tonight but i just wanted to get that on people's radar that that that's coming down coming up uh soon and it's something that i think the town's going to have to and the select board is going to have to deal with them, um probably sooner rather than later right we don't want it to be june 2023 and um <laughs> we don't know what to do so we don't have right. a fire yeah yeah the, the plan of succession yes is yeah. uh kind of it's upon us right yeah i i totally agree yeah. and i've already talked to brian about this and you know it's certainly my recommendation that the you know as current deputy chief in the department i definitely recommend that the select board start the process now to um try to figure this out because we don't want to be in a turmoil where we have no no fire chief and not you know yeah. dealing with all the administrative work okay brian 
Yeah, thank you. But if I could just ask a quick question, I don't know, I don't know if you have the contract in front of you or not, or anywhere nearby. Um, but just under the compensation section, the salary is set in the contract, but it it goes on to say that it'll be adjusted consistent with non-union employees upon the review of the personnel committee for for my contract. So it kind of falls under this this category as well. I mean, if the personnel committee makes a recommendation, the select board could look at that as well. So it's not it's not set in stone by the contract. It's, it says to be adjusted along with other recommendations by the personnel committee. Okay. But I didn't know if you had it or not, just to show the. I no, I don't have it on the on this laptop now. If if that's the case, do we want to make any comments to or any adjustments to the police chief position then? Or do we need to tell us what the percent is in the missing column? Three point eight three percent. Okay, thank you. Below at below the median. Okay. There's as far as the. If I could just make another point as far as the uh, salary survey goes, like the, the sh just as an example, the Shrewsbury chief, that's a that's a full time position, but it's a it's a part time trained officer that's working those hours, kind of like Conway. They have 20 hours administrative, 20 hours patrol. They don't have the full time training, full time academy training type of thing. So so those salaries you know, are, are held by people with part time academy training as well just as a another point of interest my argument is that it's still a contract and it was it was a contract between the police chief and the board of select the select board no i agree yeah. And when, how often does that get reviewed? I believe it's yearly right three, now, isn't it? Well, three years, I think. Three years is the contract period. So when is the next time the contract is up? I think we did a new one just last year, right? 23? Jim, I think. 2020. Um, yeah, I think it's so it's three years, but we usually do like an annual review sit down and review it just to make sure that we're meeting all of the, the guidelines within the contract. Um, but I think the last one was in FY20, I believe. So we made the one. Something's no. going to happen. That's just one more year. Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have any other comments they want to make about this? Yeah, I was uh, kind of calculating through. Um, we took out the lowest salary. I know and sometimes we do this, we'll take out the lowest and the highest and take the average of the remaining. Uh, it's still low in that case, but it's not by 3.8%. It's low by about half that. Um, because it, as I looked at it, it the, the, the 34 definitely stuck out as, as way too low. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, there was one that's that's like 85, um, that is the highest. Yeah. And I just did the calculation because that's what I do. Um, and I thought that was, it's, it's still low even by a more conservative way of calculating um, uh, what it ought to be. I'm thinking it's low, but it's not 
massively low that we're within a couple of points. And if the contract is up for review next year, I don't know that we need to make what would be a very small adjustment at this point. That's my thinking. I agree. Okay, I guess, you know, we've talked about this and it's probably, you know, up to select board and Jim then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next. The next one on there was the, that's under is the part-time police at about 4.6% below average. Um, it's certainly in my mind, knowing the struggles that we have to keep part-time police officers, we definitely should try to be at the very least at the median, if not a hair more in this case with all the, all the towns around struggling to keep police officers. And from what you were saying, it's only going to get harder because of the new police reform requirements. Correct. It's, it's going to it's going to definitely be more competitive yeah. in a sense, because if we if we've got officers making nineteen dollars and they can go to Hatfield and um, I think no, uh, I'm trying to look and see if they went to Conway and made you know eighty cents more an hour. That's that's the what we're going to run into. I mean, these I think these numbers are going to be changing as we go along as well, because now we're going to have everybody certified at the same level, you know, similar levels of training. So I think you're going to be seeing these numbers go up instead of trying to play catch up later on when they go higher. Like Keith's talking about, you know, the minimum wage, you know, police officers, you know, granted. I mean, some of our some of our officers have degrees. They, they've gone on to college. They they have degrees in criminal justice. They're looking for full time careers. You know, they're granted they're only working part time. However, you know, they are out there by themselves, and there is the risk associated with it. In today's age, things are policing is getting a lot different. So, um, we definitely have to consider staying competitive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jim, do you know off top of your head about how many hours a year you have for, in other words, right now we're, we're 90 cents below the, the actual median, which is 2050. You know, so about what is that, would that amount to about how many hours a year if we were to... uh, So 40, Right now, for our part-time officers, it's 40 hours a week. So you're looking at 2,080 hours a year. At about a dollar an hour, it's about you know, with $2,079 is somewhere in that range. It's <laughs> yeah, a couple thousand dollars. I mean, I, I certainly feel that, you know, with the police officers, with the, with what they do and <clears throat> dealing with <clears throat> the public, like they have to do that, our part-time officers at least deserve to be making more than nineteen um, dollars an hour, and I I would make a motion that we get it up to twenty fifty. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll put it to a vote. Betty. Yes. Myself, yes. Susan? Yes. Joyce? Aye. And Tom? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Is there any other positions that anybody else here need, wants has any questions about? Um, the, the one thing that I would just like to bring forth is to, um, with the highway superintendent position last year, when we looked at the position, um, the motion that was made and seconded was that we were going to revisit the position and come up with a more comprehensive solution. Um, you know, that still hasn't been done yet. Um, and it's, it's basically the same, same old scenario that the position is being compared to highway superintendents who are just doing highway superintendent, you know, just handling the highways. Whereas when this position had the buildings added to it in 2020, additional money was put into the salary. And again, the same scenario goes is that the numbers that we're looking at right now do not reflect the additional responsibilities because we're not comparing apples to apples with the rest of the towns. And so, you know, I'm. Again, I just want to make the, make it clear that you know a year ago, we the motion was made to re, readdress it for a more comprehensive solution, and we haven't done that yet. So, um, I just feel that maybe. I thought we did something last year. I yeah, thought you, we you made you made um, you made the motion and and you increased it, but in the you know in the minutes it said we were we were just picking numbers you know we didn't have um, well we had some rational basis for it yeah yeah but, i, I yeah. get that but again it wasn't um the wording was to come up with a more comprehensive solution so that we're not okay. looking at the position each year and only comparing it to um the highway superintendents and, and you know it's, it's, i guess it's just my thought that you know with the um for the town to get somebody that's looking after all the buildings and believe me we have found things at the town offices that had potential leaks this past year and did work at the library you know we're we're doing a lot of work at other town buildings to prevent damage that normally would not be no one would be looking at this stuff and the damage would start. Yeah. And once the damage has occurred, then we're certainly spending much more than we're paying, uh, you know, myself to or my position to be looking after this stuff. Um, you know, I'm not saying at the moment I have a specific amount I'm looking at. It's just that I, I guess I almost think that maybe we need to, if we're going to keep comparing this position to the other highway superintendents that maybe we need to separate what we pay for the buildings and look at that separately. Well, at one point we had some kind of a request for a building or buildings and grounds uh, person, I guess that came from Billy Smith. Right, and, and uh, what? But there was no monetary amount attached to that. Right, and what he was looking at was, you know, he wanted to have someone look at, you know, maintaining, you know, like doing landscaping in the- um, Early Heat Park. Her, in the Veterans Memorial and, and doing work landscaping at, at Hurley and things of that nature. So at the moment, my position was only buildings. Right, as I'm, it should be. I'm not dealing with, you know, if there's an issue at, at Hurley, he with the, with the, the baseball field needs to be worked on. That's not my responsibility to point that out and say, hey, no, um, my responsibility was the building so that we try to nip in, but nip in the bud any, any damage that may occur.
you know, the other thing that has been a, a, a huge task this recently in, is I'm dealing with the insurance adjuster for the damage at the police station, you know, with the, the sewer line that failed underneath the concrete floor. I've had to put in a lot of hours, you know, of my time just to contacting the contractors that are involved in that. And as I said, the insurance adjuster, if, hey. if I wasn't doing the building, then, then that would fall on somebody else. So um, how are we going to do, I mean, let's, I, I think we're just going around in circles. Um, how are we going to proceed to, um, to have a rational way of doing this? Is that, I mean, what would, does anybody have a suggestion about how to proceed to do that? I, I guess I, I have two thoughts on that. One, I think is what Keith was suggesting. Uh, if we create a separate line item um, for that that job, and that job happens to be held by the same person who has another job. The other thought that I had is looking at what we did last year, what percent did we increase the position increase the salary for the position to account for the extra work. If we then look, mm -hmm. if we look at that number and yeah. in the future, always apply that same percentage to, okay, here is what we yeah. would pay the highway person for highway and let's add X, you know, we will always add X percent for the building responsibility. Those are two approaches I could think of. Yeah. So for example, if I understand you right, you'd be, uh, we're looking at this one, it says that it's 5.46, so call it five and a half percent above, um, and that we're happy with that being five and a half percent. So as other people's salaries increase, we want to keep that at five and a half percent if, you know, if this year's numbers were were kind of a baseline. Does that is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, I, I think that's what I'm saying, but I'm also thinking that that gets complicated, and we all may understand that. But in years to come, will people will that will people know hmm. what to do on that line yeah. item, as opposed to if we just create a separate line item? Hmm. You know, when you go back to to um, what we did last year with the um that i mean you know i'd have to have because again the numbers in 22 again are skewed in my mind if we go back to what we did for 21 and that was um the medium in in 21 was 69752 um and the additional um, number that I had was given brought me up to nine percent. Uh, no, wait a minute, I've got that wrong. Um, I got, I don't know, I lost my train here in regards to that. Um, but I think I would agree with something like Susan is recommending that we that we just sort of separate it and look at it and yeah. be happy with that percentage over. And that will keep that percentage going forward and not always be working our way back to being under. Yeah. But I think I feel like there's problems with having a separate line because what do we do for comps? Like, what do we compare that to? We got nothing to compare that to. Oh, nobody so I kind of like the second idea better than the first. As, as just sort of a practical thing, it's a number that we can calculate and use for comparison. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wasn't sure which would be easier to execute. They're basically accomplishing the same thing, but I defer to other minds on the best way to do that. One of, one of my thoughts is if, and and I, I realize you're a salaried employee. You get paid to work forty hours a week, fifty two weeks a year. Snow, winter roads, everything. It's all you're all the same salary. If, if you're working more than four, to, with the two jobs combined, 
you're working more than 40 hours a week. I mean, I, it, are you working 50 hours a week combined? No, no it, it's, it's not so much the hours. It's just the overall responsibility. And, and it's so many, many a times it's the, the incidentals. You know, I get called on, on a weekend to go to the town hall for an issue. I get, you know, it's, and again, it's many a times, Again, Tom, it's not necessarily the hours. It's just the the additional responsibilities that I'm having to deal with and juggle into the daily schedule. And and ballpark, what it boils down to is, uh, if we go back to the salary survey, you were making you know sixteen. Your salary was sixty nine something as the highway superintendent, and we added four basically added four thousand dollars to it. To, as, and gave yeah. you the responsibility of the building part of it. That's that's what was at the time we at the time we did it. The that's select board did. gave me forty five hundred dollars, and that was. Right. And that's, I mean, that's not a. You're, are you saying that's not enough? Or no, I, I'm just saying that that's what was done. And and again, if it wants to be something along that lines where we take the 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 meet you know the actual median. And add the forty five hundred dollars. Yeah, that that then that means that the town is getting a a building superintendent for forty five hundred dollars a year. And I think that's that's you don't think that's insurance. enough. No, I just think that's cheap insurance in that aspect. That, um, but again, that need that means that I'm always going to be showing up as um, mm -hmm. four to five to six thousand. You know, depending and somewhere in that range over the the rest well, of the sh should we break it into two positions i mean i don't mm -hmm. i don't really understand that i understand part of the issue here but i don't if we break do we break it down into two positions now but it still adds up to seventy three thousand seven hundred and something dollars uh i don't know oh. uh, Rich's point on that i think was what do we do for comparables yeah, who do you yeah. compare it to? Right. So I think that's maybe why just having sort of a constant offset as a percentage might make sense. So right now the difference is about four thousand. So it's not quite forty five hundred. Okay. Um, um, if well, I here I am thinking I can do all these calculations right. Um, so uh, the percent. Am I on the right page? Oh, I'm looking at 2021. Sorry, 2022. So um, last year, the, the last year after the adjustment was made to bring me to 7278, I was 6,178 over the median. Yep. Yeah. So you got basically got about six thousand dollars to be building mm -hmm. superintendent. Correct. Right. Yeah. Over the median. But correct. Right. So right. But you, you know, the other thing is you've been here a long time, so you ought to be at the top of it anyway. So, right. so I guess to me, the question is, do we, I, I mean, one column is the difference in dollars and one column is difference in percent. So should we be trying to maintain an absolute difference of $6,000 or should we enshrine that in a percentage? And it's it's kind of up to Keith in a way. I mean, it, it's whatever he's going to be comfortable with. I mean, put it this way: if it's if it's left for right now, if it's left at six thousand um, versus, a, I mean, a if it's left at six thousand, it's it's just status quo. Right, and, and right, it's and and that you know, as salaries go up, if the six thousand doesn't, so right. I, I guess That's I would argue so. for fairness, it should be. Uh, percent. Uh, so percent. if I go over here and figure out um, six thousand divided by seventy three, seven seventy eight, seventy two, seven seventy eight. Um, or, I'm I'm doing this in the Excel oh, spreadsheet. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, so I'm just okay. looking at like current salary, right? Yeah. Yep. And um. Somehow that uh, number's rounding it off. So I'm going to get 
Um, that says about 0.08. That doesn't make sense. How did I do that wrong? Oh, because it doesn't, yeah, I need another zero there. That says about 8%. $6,000 is about 8% of your current salary that's in that orange column. So for a premium of that, of 8%, you're the building superintendent. So if we were, if we were to use that, I mean, I, I know it's been a year, but if we use that number as if, as if we want this difference column to be $6,000 this year, that means we'd want the percentage column to be 8% and then use the 8% moving forward. So that the difference would also be getting bigger if we do it by percentage. And that's something that I, I think is yeah. fair in the fact that it, it addresses the position. Yeah. Yeah, and does it feel like your like your job is eight percent bigger or harder? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's I mean, uh, you know, again, it's it, when right. you, it's not eight percent longer, but like right, it's and that's the hard part. I you know, I'm trying to get across that it's just so much yeah. more responsibility um, that mm -hmm. I have to incorporate, and you know, yeah. work that we've done like at the at the town office this year, we got up on top mm -hmm. of the flat roof and determined that it needed some serious caulking to be done or we were gonna have water infiltrating through the roof. And you know, yeah. without the oversight of that happening, it yeah. would, it would, the town would wait until it leaks. Thank goodness we have a building superintendent. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe. If I can put this into a motion, yeah. Um, I move that we, uh, moving forward, handle the job discrepancy problem, the pay discrepancy comparison problem by uh, trying to maintain the highway slash building superintendent at a salary that's 8% higher than the median for highway superintendents just for the purpose of the salary comparisons. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Is there any other discussion? My only question is a execution question. Uh, how do we make sure this stays in our memory? How do we document this on the spreadsheet? Do we have a formula for calculating? Yeah, oh, there's a formula for calculating 8%. That's pretty easy. Right, but, it's, right, right. <laughs> but do we build that, you know, add, add a column into the spreadsheet so that it always does that uh, as a reminder to always do that? Right. We, yeah, I, I, we could annotate the spreadsheet so that that information is there. Yeah, I, I, I would think that's what I'm suggesting. That spreadsheet that we keep using, I think, is probably a really good repository for that mm -hmm. information so that we remember it. Yeah, so that's that's what I would. I, I guess I would add that to the motion that we record this in the in the spreadsheet and have the calculation done in the spreadsheet. Okay, um, I, that's a friendly amendment. Okay, then we have a motion made and a friendly amendment. Is there any other discussion? If not, I'll put it to a vote. Betty? Yes. Susan? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Tom? Yes. And myself, I'll abstain. Um, all right. I, is there any other positions we need to look at or we think that addresses all, uh, wait, you know, the other, Okay, the other one that was below was the water superintendent at, you know, minus 9.32. Um, and again, we go through the same scenario. We only have two numbers to work with. Um, yeah. And we, 
that's a water commissioner's problem. Yeah. Okay. And they're an enterprise fund. That's that's kind of their issue. Yep. Yeah, the so one, the one thing that I the information with them. And we can we can make a recommendation, but we, you know, we have no power over them. Right. And given that we've only got two comparable numbers, we take the average, but we would we, you know, get rid of the lowest and get rid of the highest, and there we've got zero. So I think he's better off <laughs> uh, with Thank us not much. making a recommendation. No. Um, because because we don't really have enough data. You know, you know, another thing that that when I happen to look at it today, I, you know, because the the numbers there are in an hourly format, um, the 3483 that is is coming up as the medium. When you compare that to like the highway superintendents themselves, that 69752 is 30 equals 3353. So in this case, the two water superintendents are making more than highway superintendents. Yeah, we can't not, have that. We're not opening up that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> like, you know, that, that, that it almost should be, mm -hmm. the, that number should be really in, in a salary more so than hourly. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. FYI, everybody, I just went to the water department budget in my budget book and they request or you know they are requesting that he be that the superintendent his salary be raised to 50,000 which is an $8,996 increase because he has more responsibilities and he works more hours yeah I think that was good one with an increase in hours if I recall yes yeah yeah okay okay um getting back to the Agenda. Cola. Yeah. Do we have enough energy to talk about cola right now? Yeah, because you got to make a decision. The finance committee is getting worked up about it. So we got to okay. have it. All right. Then I'll open the discussion for cost of living adjustments. Brian, do you want to update us on the information that you've gotten or haven't been able to get, as your note had said? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, well, last thing we're gonna uh, we're gonna look at uh, CPI for January. Well. Yeah. Here is the, this is the overview table for CPI. This is for New England. These are the, the regions that are really available to us. Um, so New England was 6.6, .6, Boston, Cambridge, New England, Mass, New Hampshire, 6.3. Uh, Northeast region was 6.3. So those were the CPI numbers. Are you um, sharing a screen here or we're looking at that um, in the handout? It should have shared. No. Oh, no. I, yeah. No. And it's been funky today. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me stop sharing and I'll reshare. Okay. There you go. That works. That, that works. All right. Um. There we go. That's what I said. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Northeast six point three. New England division mm. six point six. Boston Cambridge New England six point three. And um, the reason that the, the amount that it jumped from December to January, but that's. That's a big increase if it's a 12 month average. I was just noticing how um, the annual average 2020 to 21 is about half of, say, the December and the January numbers, maybe a little bit more than half, but half ish. 
And um, that's because all this inflation has really been in the last half of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I don't know if that's a good reason to be really focusing on the annual average column rather than the December and January columns. I don't know if I understand it well enough to know. I mean, I know that one number is less than the other, so I kind of like that better in some ways. But if what we really ought to be aiming for are things that are in the, the rightmost columns, um, you know, it, in the interest of our personnel, then that's, I, I guess, if anybody has any insight as to how to look at those numbers um, and recommend something, because I know, you know, when, whatever raise we give that lasts for the whole year. And, you know, right. as inflation comes and goes, if it's only high for a little while, then, you know, maybe averaging over the year is the right thing to do. It lasts more than a year, Joyce. It lasts a lifetime of the employee here. Yep. It doesn't go away. Right, right. But uh, yeah, but the yeah, but the inflation itself, if it's really high for a few months and then it's low right. for many other months, then if you just look at the high months, then you're um, right. you're kind of skewed the other way. And yes, I, I, I that yeah, I think I didn't speak very well a moment ago. And unfortunately, we do not have a crystal ball to tell us what it's going nope. to do. Yes. The rest of 2022 and actually the first half of 2023, because this is for the budget that goes July to June, correct? Right. Yep. So we, we have to use our best judgment as to if inflation has gone up in the past few months over where it was earlier in 2021. Do we have any yep. reason to think that that is going to continue or reverse? Right. And I think it comes down to, because none of us are either fortune tellers or economists. Nope. Mm -hmm. It comes back to our best judgment. Fortune tellers. Do we have an indication how close we are to knowing what <clears throat> The school is doing yet? Is that still in? The, I think the schools are under contract right now. They're negotiating for the next set of contracts, but schools are, I think they're, they might be 2% this year. Um, they were like I, some combination of 1.5 and 2 for the three years. Um, and I, so it's no more than 2%. But that's just because that's because they're in that contract. And right now we're negotiating the next one, which. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with the same issue. Yeah. I feel like it's really important. Oh, wow. Wait, 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 I want to look at these trend lines. This is, so this is something different. This is the. That's the 12 month average, right? This is changing compensation costs in the Boston no. metro area. It's a little bit different okay. than the CPI, but it looks about, it looks at wages. Yeah. Mm. Compensation costs. And what was the chart below it? Yeah. It's a twelve-month change in compensation. This is private. This is not public sector. Okay. I just can't help but feeling that I want to do right by our employees because they have these are the people who have been you know on the front line for this town over the past mm -hmm. two years when things have basically been hell um and i understand the desire to not have the tax rate go up but i can't help but feeling this isn't where we want to cut corners because these people are our community and they are what makes our community well, the other way you, we can do this two different ways. We can we can give a good size cola, and then they there isn't any, or we may decide not to give them any COVID money, or we go with a smaller cola and then mm. assume that the, some of the cola money will be doled out to the employees. I don't know what the schools are doing about cola money or uh, COVID okay. money. Uh, you yeah, know, that I don't know. I don't know that we, we talked about giving the transfer station attendant, uh, 
whatever, mm -hmm. however many hours he works, will will compensate. You know, uh, give him so much an hour for hours worked because he's on was on the front lines or they were on the front lines uh, during the whole COVID thing. Mm -hmm. uh, police officers. That was another discussion. Uh, the the highway workers. Uh, how much did they deal with the public while during COVID? They got two weeks off with pay during COVID. You know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different things going on here. Yeah. Uh, if, if you go with a big cola, I've said this before, and from the finance committee in me, mm -hmm. if you go with a big number, that number doesn't go away. That number is with us for the rest of the eternity. Yeah. But that is also true for the prices that these people are paying for yeah. for goods. You're that, saying the price is never going to come down? No. Have we? I, 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 you know, have we ever seen in a period of inflation? We've seen in play inflation inflation settle and inflation go down, but it is very very rare to see deflation, to see right. decreases in cost. No. Yeah. So these, I think, you know, these these price increases. Yes, gas fluctuates. You know, gas may come down somewhat, but there's you know so many things that we've a, a new bar is being set. Yeah. Yep. I think it's really interesting that the um, the the pressures on this is for private industry that the sort of their pressure seems to be saying they're they're raising people's wages in the three to four percent range and we're competing with them for workers by and large um and it, it didn't seem to matter whether it was the um uh, the u.s or boston although i can't tell the which which is for which but that you know there's um the one that's at the chart number two that's sitting in the three to four percent range um going up towards five um chart one very similar um although that one i can tell that the lighter uh, line is boston and the darker line is the us um and that is also very similar to the annual average column uh where you know there's like 4.7 3.9 3.4 3.6 3.3 um and i know on that for that uh, one of the other charts you know the fur cog sticks out at Six percent, but a lot of towns were, you know, looking at still in the kind of the two, two and a half, maybe three percent range, and that, and that's our, that's where we're we're squeezed, right? Because we can only do two and a half percent increase on our tax levy without doing an override, and so it seems like something in the three to four percent range might be doable this year we have a little bit of wiggle room in our levy limit but we 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 would have a real problem if we have to do that year after year after year and we i think we have a real problem with doing something like the FERCOG is doing for themselves really uh with the six percent i i i don't see how how that's gonna work in in um, the FERCOG's case they're just gonna pass the cost on to all the towns and that's right we, and we we have to eat it we if right if if in the private sector they decide to give their employees a four percent cola they they get the money back by raising the price of their product five percent right. or whatever right. the town can't do that right right if, if unless we, we do an override which is unlikely that's right yeah right so yeah so i i feel like it, it, if we can do something you know better than the usual two two and a half or so that we've been doing in the past two years i i, I mean I, i'm really sympathetic with what susan is saying that you know that I, I i have no idea if i'm even going to get a raise this year but you know if it, it, the inflation is real and it's measurable and we can probably justify it as a recommendation. And I don't know 
right. how much your, that will cost the town and what kind of trouble we'd be in. But, you know, I, I sort of feel like that's where we ought to be in the three to 4% range. Which is, okay. you know, that's basically one way of looking at it. It's that's meeting in the middle. If the inflation, inflation is at seven and a half percent, half of that puts you in the three to the three to four percent. So, you know, yeah, the graph we're looking at right now is basically meeting meeting the employee in the middle. And some of that difference, especially for key employees, can be made up with the COLA with the COVID relief money. Yeah, the COVID relief being a, a one-time sort of thing. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, in, in effect, doing a mixed bag to compensate people for the inflation that we see will stay, the price increases that we see will stay, which goes to the COLA, and price increases that could revert, like gasoline potentially, from the COVID money. I will make a motion and I'm picking a number fairly randomly. So this is dis discussable, if that's the word. We're talking three and a half to four percent. So I will make a motion that we would recommend a COLA of 3.75. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion made. And second, and is there any other discussion? If not, I'll bring it to a vote. Betty? Yes. Susan? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Tom? No. And myself? Yes. So it's um, four to one. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda and our last item on the agenda was the premium pay. Um, Brian, do we need to try to determine an amount or just make a recommendation to, how do we handle this? Well, we can table it if we want to, um, mm. or we could talk, yeah, I don't know that we need specific amounts. It's I mean, it's, I guess what I would say if this is really while there's a pot of money that the town has to decide what to do with, it it's not something that affects our budget for next fiscal year. No, yeah. right. So we, we and I know hold it's, off on it. Yeah, yeah, and I know we're going on two hours and. Yep. Yeah, I'm not thinking very well anymore. At you know, at eight oh one, that's what happens to my brain. Can I? <laughs> that's why selecting meetings then by eight o'clock because eight oh one, and I'm jelly up here. Yeah. I make a motion we adjourn. A second. <laughs> okay. I'll do to people for the next meeting. There you go. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, everybody. Thanks.